Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurveda healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the show. We are getting started today with our first Cabral host call of the weekend. Again, my opportunity to see what's going on in our community, what health-specific issues they may be dealing with for themselves, their family, their friends, their loved ones, On all things wellness, weight loss, anti-aging, always happy to be able to answer these questions. Each and every weekend, we typically get to somewhere around 10 to 15 each weekend, about half that for each show, and about six weeks behind. So if you're new to the show, if you're new to the Cabral House Calls, we answer these questions in the order that they come in. And again, all things wellness, weight loss, anti-aging, health coaching, career, mindset, you name it. So love being able to do this. We are going to be picking right up where we left off. And you can follow along with today's questions at stephencabral.com forward slash 1604. stephencabral.com forward slash 1604. You can read along with the questions as I am answering them right now. So let's open up this document. Again, I never look at the questions ahead of time. My team puts all the questions together that have come in, and I simply answer them in the order that they've come in. All right, let's start off with Nayeli. Nayeli says, actually, I just answered Nayeli's question. I know that for sure. Let me make sure of that. All right, we are now back on track. We are answering Lindsay's question next. I knew I answered Nayeli's question a couple podcasts back. Okay, so Lindsay's asking, thank you, Dr. Brawl, for all you do. Your depth of knowledge on all things in wellness and your passion for helping others are both amazing. Thank you, Lindsay. I have become addicted to your podcast and learning from you. I did search all about the podcast, but didn't find anything. I'm interested to see if you are familiar with Carbon 60 and what your feelings are about it. Thanks in advance. Well, Carbon 60, I'll tell you this, has done a great job marketing. They really have. Because now it's come up just in the past, let's say, three weeks of Cabral House Calls all at once. So, Lindsay, this question has been answered. And if you just go to stephencabral.com, I'll do it with you, stephencabral.com forward slash podcast, and you type in Carbon 60, or it might be C60, I might have abbreviated it as, but let's find out. Carbon 60, type it right in for you. And again, go to stephencabral.com forward slash podcasts. And what you're going to do is always just type in your keyword inside the search box. And you should be able to find out the show I did it on. And it looks like it was done right there in episode 1577. All right. So there's your answer, Lindsay. Yvonne's up next. What is GCMAF and is it in colostrum? Is it a good product to take daily? I have heard that it should be taken with vitamin D3 and K2. Okay, so let's answer your question and let's let other people know what these things are, Yvonne, before we answer that. Okay, so for anyone that is not aware of what GCMAF is, it actually stands for protein-derived or GC protein-derived macrophage activating factor. So the macrophages or macrophages, depending on how you like to pronounce it, or what the immune system uses in order to scavenge, basically, infections, disease, etc. So we need these. The human body should be able to create those on their own. But this is a specific injectable. If my mind is not, is not failing me right now, I believe it's an injectable created by a specific company that they're purporting that it may help with cancer and it may help with autism and other such factors. And since it is a vitamin D binding protein, I believe, taking vitamin D, taking magnesium, calcium, vitamin K, uh, all makes sense. Now, again, you're going to get all of those in a daily activated multivitamin. You're going to get all of those in a daily nutritional support. So it's not like you're not going to get them in those. You are. Now, 
Does it work? I don't know. I, I don't have the, the answer for you on that. I'm not sure that anyone does. Maybe there are some good scientific studies on it. I haven't seen those yet. And is it in colostrum? I don't know that this specifically is because I believe that this is a man-made injectable. However, colostrum does help with the immune system. I mean, it does help boost immunoglobulins. Do you want to take, let's just talk about colostrum daily. Do you want to take colostrum daily? Probably neither one of these daily. If I recommend colostrum in my practice, and it's not often, it's oftentimes with maybe younger children after they've, they've had gut-based issues, et cetera, we'll recommend it for maybe somewhere between six and 12 weeks. So hopefully that's helpful. Thanks. Thanks, Yvonne. Paula's up next. Hi, Dr. Ball. My organic acids test showed I was a little low on CoQ10. I've heard that it's very important in order to burn fat. Not sure if this is true. I don't remember Laura, my health coach, advising me to supplement on it as she focused on other areas such as yeast overgrowth, low vitamin C, etc. What are your thoughts? Should I supplement on coenzyme Q10? Yeah, I mean, this is a really good point. I'm happy to answer this for you. Laura is a great health coach on our team, and she gave you the right advice. Meaning, whenever you see coenzyme Q10, you may have heard it as ubiquinone or ubiquinol, like different versions of it, that you don't want to focus on that first, especially if you're under the age of, let's say, 55. And the reason is that you need to get your entire body back into balance. So if you're dealing with constant inflammation from yeast overgrowth or bacterial overgrowth, you actually do want to fix those things first. And the reason is that absorption is going to improve in your gut. Your mitochondrial action will improve if there's less inflammation and there's more B vitamins available. So while I believe as well that coenzyme Q10 is extremely important, especially for those people on statins or our cardiovascular risk, you know, it's not an immediate something that we would go to right away. Now, let's say you're over 55, 60 years old, there are cardiovascular issues, then there's nothing wrong with using the product. It's a great product. Um, I typically, as of right now, are using a more absorbable form of coenzyme Q10. I'll use maybe a phospholipid bond one. Maybe I'll use ubiquinol. There's a lot of great brands out there. I've recommended some in the past as well. But um, for sure, Laura gave you the right advice. It's not the first thing to focus on. And just keep in mind as well that that number can be thrown off because of yeast-based levels. So again, the, the right recommendation made. Okay. What I would say, Paul, one more thing is if you do a follow-up test on that candida metabolic and vitamins test, also called the organic acids test, and let's say it's 16 weeks from when you began the program and CoQ10 is still low, but you got rid of that yeast overgrowth, that's when you could potentially start to supplement with it if you'd like. Marlena is up next. Hi, Dr. Ball. I have a few questions. I hope you don't mind answering, but I only trust you. Thanks, Marlena. Number one is this. I'm in the middle of the CBO protocol, and even though I'd love to do the CBO finisher, shipping to the UK is expensive, and I can't afford it. I know that it would be ideally the best choice, but can I substitute it with another good probiotic and maybe take some glutamine and aloe vera on the side? Is taking 50 billion probiotic with 10 different strains safe after getting rid of the bacterial yeast overgrowth? After working on stealing the gut, apart from continuing with the probiotic, do you encourage adding probiotic foods on top of that? Or can you take too much of probiotics? What are your thoughts on rotating between probiotics in order to get exposed to as many strains as possible? These are a lot of questions. I'm just kidding, uh, Marlena. Happy to help uh, with this. Okay, so first and foremost, the thing with the shipping from Equilibrium Nutrition is that we add in now all of the taxes and all of the things that you would have to pay. So it kind of looks like more than it is, but then you don't have to pay the duties and taxes and imports and all that all that stuff for each country. But I, I understand where you're coming from, know what you're coming from, and you can look at the ingredients. So for example, on the healthy gut support, check it out that it's five grams of glutamine per serving. It has zinc in it. It has uh, N-acetyl glucosamine. It has aloe vera. I believe it has marsh, well, marshmallow root. Yes, I believe it has marshmallow root. And that might be my healthy belly that I'm thinking of right now. I'm going through about 100 products in my head. And so, and yes, it's a great product. Yeah, no doubt about it. And that would just, I would just caution you because if you take glutamine on its own, you take more zinc on its own, you start to take aloe vera, those might all add up to the same exact cost, right? So we just kind of put them in one because that's the synergy. It works better that way. Number two, you asked, is it okay to take the probiotics with 10 different strains? Well, again, you have to understand too that we've been doing this for a long, long time and we would never give you anything that we didn't feel was in your best health. So what we do, if you look at the CBO protocol, it's no probiotics, 
but we use a non-pathogenic yeast. And then it's one strain of probiotics to set the stage for the small intestine. And then we move in with the additional probiotics there. So that's exactly how we do it. That's how we've been most successful. And uh, obviously, I wish the same for you. Then after that, can you start using kefir or fermented veggies? You might be able to. Some people don't do well with adding more fermented foods after that. Some people do. Why? Those people with more of a sluggish-based gut, low peristaltic movement through the intestines, they build up more bacteria. Those people that are also more stressed oftentimes have to deal with, until they fix the stress as well, the ileocecal valve issues that allow bacteria to move from the colon up into the small intestine. And that can cause small intestinal bacterial overgrowth repeatedly. So again, you'll have to see how you feel. And the only really way to know is that you kind of live the life that you want. And then you retest that organic acids test. We call it the candida metabolic and vitamins test. And you see if you're at a good level of beneficial bacteria. So hopefully that's helpful. Let's see. Did I get all your questions? Oh, and the thing about kefir, kefir is dairy. So some people can do well with it and some people don't do as well. I'm sure they make a coconut milk kefir by now but usually it's, it's uh, cow's or goat's-based milk. I'm not an advocate at all of cow's-based milk, so if you were to go with one, I would go with goat. Okay, Lydia is up next. Hi, Dr. Brawl. Love your podcast and all the products. Oh, one more thing I just want to mention. Merlina, you wrote in on May 16th. It is now about six weeks after that. You might already be done with the CBO protocol. That's why, again, I'm happy to answer your questions. Just know that it's about a six to eight week lag time from the time that you write in to the time I can answer your question just because we answer all the questions in the order they come in. All right. Lydia is up next. Hi, Dr. Brawl. Love your podcast and all the products I've used from Equilibrium. I'm thinking about my summer detox and wondering if nutritional yeast is allowed. Thank you for all you do. Okay, Lydia, great question. While you're doing the detox, I recommend taking out the nutritional yeast because nutritional yeast works for some people, just like anything, right? And it doesn't work for others. Those people with more of a fermentable-based gut, meaning they're more prone to bloating and gas and skin rashes and digestive-based issues, brain fog, they don't do as well oftentimes with nutritional yeast. You might do just fine. So what I would say, though, is during the detox, the detox is a time of rest. Try to eliminate all the non-essentials, all right? Lydia's next question is, hi, Dr. Raw. I was wondering why certain vegetables like zucchini and squash aren't included on the detox guide. Thanks so much. It's not that they're not okay, but they're a starchier form of a vegetable, and we are not doing starchy-based vegetables on the detox guide. So you'll see we've taken off most of the nightshades. We've taken off the sweet potatoes. We've taken off the zucchini. I'm not against them. So I would actually add squash back in if someone wasn't really looking to lose weight. And it actually says that. It says sweet potatoes and berries are okay for those people not looking to lose weight. But the truth is, I'm going to do my detox. Let's see when this is actually going to debut. I record these about five days in advance. So, well, regardless, I do my detox June, this year it will be June 22nd. So I'm recording this on June 17th. Okay. So what does that mean? Well, it means that for that week, I'm going to lose probably a little bit more weight than I want to lose. And I'll probably lose five pounds. Now, the most I want to lose right now is about three pounds. That's the most. So what I will do is I'll simply just gain two more pounds back. But that's it. So that's how I look at it. Hopefully that answers your question, Lydia. Okay, James is up next. Hi, doctor. I'm 25 years old, but just the other day my back went and I had terrible pain in my lumbar region. It was a pretty bad pain and it was even painful to walk. It decreased over the following days, but it came out of nowhere. And I know that something is wrong to be having this osteoarthritis type of pain at my young age. Is there any way of fixing this? I guess just mobility and strengthening work. I just don't know. I just don't want this to get worse as I age because if it's this bad when I'm 25, I can only imagine how bad it will be when I grow into an old man. James, thank you for writing in. And I'm hoping that... I can answer your question and put your mind at ease. This may have nothing to do with osteoarthritis. So this may have been a slight herniation or bulging disc. I got that and I was only 23 years old. So oh, actually, we'll go back a little bit. Believe it or not, I mean, well, this is a separate, this was actually an injury in the gym. And it was just a freak accident. Sometimes that happens. I turned my head while doing a warm-up set for bench press, incline bench press, when I was 21 years old or so, my, maybe 22. It was my senior year of college. Working out with my workout buddy, and it instantly locked up, and I was in so much pain. And so I just had him take the bar. I, I mean, 
it was a lightweight. It was my warm-up set. And I was all locked up. And he had to drive me to the emergency room, to the clinic down the street. And we were in uh, Providence, Rhode Island at the time. And I was an absolute mess. They gave me a muscle relaxer and something else. And it started to get better within the next three days. But I was very cautious after that. But the good news is it's never happened again. Now, the other item I wanted to mention is that when I was about 23 years old or so, I had basically injured my back. And again, it's always during just random occurrences sometimes. And I just went down. I actually twisted, which you should never do. Bending down or bending over and twisting to your side is one of the most vulnerable positions you can put your back in. So I just that goes for everybody. Do not bend over and twist. Very, very unsupported in terms of your lower back, your lumbar spine. So you always squat down with your legs. If possible, you keep yourself, you just keep your spine neutral to pick something up or just to reach over. So the thing is, you may actually just be dealing with a herniated or bulging disc. I would go to see a very good qualified chiropractor, not just for an adjustment, but actually to look at your posture, look at your gait, look at your tightness maybe in your hips. So for me, just like you said, it's mobility. It's opening up the hips. It's opening up the hamstrings. It's strengthening the core. And again, if it's not arthritis of the spine, which it shouldn't be unless you've had some really tough sports injuries or something or some degenerative spine bone-based issue, hopefully you'll be just fine. Again, I haven't had another injury to my lower back since. So I'm glad I got those out of the way in my early 20s and learned from it. And now I'm just trying to keep my body strong as well. All right, Tom's up next. Does water with squeezed lime and a pinch of Himalayan sea salt break my fast? I usually have it after fasting for 11 hours, and then I have breakfast after 12 hours. I'm not sure if I'm actually fasting 12 hours because of the lime. No, Tom, I would say it absolutely does not break your fast. It's essentially electrolytes. There's very little of any carbohydrates in a squeezed lime, and that includes fructose, meaning like negligible. It should not change your blood sugar whatsoever, and there's nothing really to digest at all, so it's not really turning on the digestive system. So I would say you're absolutely fine. Of course, you can test that with a glucometer. You can also, well, it's also with digestion, right? Because if you just had coffee or I should say a ketone drink or something with calories, like a fat, it wouldn't change your glucose levels most likely, but it does break your fast. So it does it for a small period of time. I would say that there's not going to be an issue because there's really no calories in that line, right? Okay. Let's get one more question in. Next question is from Maria. Hi, Dr. Ball. Thank you so much for all of your amazing content you provide. It is truly top quality information. Thank you, Maria. I appreciate all these kind words today. Feeling good. I live in Colombia, and I don't know anyone in the U.S. that could ship me the CBO protocol. I'm sure I have yeast overgrowth and really wanted to do your protocol. What is the alternative for those that don't have access to equilibrium nutrition products? That's a great question. Let me try to work through that right now because I don't know that I have the answer to that. We're shipping to over two dozen countries right now. We're always looking to ship to additional countries. We just, it's not easy. Like I have a whole logistics team. I don't know if people know that. Is that I have an amazing team that run Equilibrium Nutrition. My job is to teach. My job is to set the vision for the company, to formulate the products. But, you know, the shipping and logistics is handled by executive, by like professionals. So if you knew anyone in any of the countries that we ship to, they would be able to then ship it to you. Right now, I don't know of any way that we could get it to Colombia, but I'll tell you, we have a great customer service team, so maybe they may know. So what I would do is I would email support at equilibriumnutrition.com, and they could provide you with that answer. Okay, looks like we have time. Let's get to one more question. This is from Michelle. Hi, Dr. Ball. I have to thank you so much for your book, A Man's Guide to Muscle and Strength, which I love. As a more Vata body type woman, I finally have healthy muscle on my body and feel so much better. I was wondering if you might share your top three favorite gluteus maximus exercises that shape and tone the butt. So maybe I can do a few more of those this summer. You are absolutely the best teacher and I'm truly grateful to have found you. Thank you, Michelle. I mean, these kind words today are amazing. (laughs) Again, I'm feeling, uh, feeling a lot of love today. Appreciate it. So a man's guide to muscle and strength. And I'm so glad, Michelle, that you brought this up. It's not just for men. It's for human beings. It's for all human beings. My publisher, I don't own the book. The publisher is Human Kinetics and Human Kinetics is the largest 
fitness-based, textbooks-based company, and a lot of them are written for other health professionals. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be approached by them around 2009 and wrote the book, and well, still lives on. It will always live on, honestly, because it's true exercises stand the test of time. There's nothing crazy fancy in it. It's just good exercises that get results. That's it. And I created essentially my best programs and put them in there. So Michelle, your question is though, what are we favorite glute exercises? Okay. These are easy. Like uh, these are easy because meaning like easy for me to give you because I, I've lived in this world for so long and I love to be able to talk about this topic, but I should probably maybe do a show just on these types of exercises. But okay. So you asked the question, I'm going to give you your answer. Even if I do a separate show. The first one is this. It is Romanian deadlifts. Romanian deadlifts with any type of weight that you would like. It could be holding a kettlebell, doing them with one leg, a one leg Romanian deadlift. It could be with two dumbbells by your sides, however you prefer, right? But Romanian deadlifts, hands down, feel the stretch, keep about a 20 degree bend in the knee, stretch back with those glutes and hamstrings. And at the top, squeeze your glutes. That's what a lot of people miss. They get the stretch on the way down, keep the spine neutral, but at the top, squeeze those glutes. All right, the second one is this, walking lunges. Walking lunges, but there's a caveat to that. Lunge an extra four to six inches than you would normally lunge. So make it not out of your comfort zone, but make it a little extra lunge. And as you do that, it will actually take some of the pressure off the quadricep and put it more on the glute because you also need to explode now more through the movement, stepping it together or either stepping right into your next stride. And if you're advanced, you can step right in that next stride. So Romanian deadlifts, walking lunges for sure. And then what would be my last one? Let's see. There's again, so many good ones. There's a one legged reach. There's a high step up. So a high step up is really nice for those glutes too. You know what I'm going to give you? Basically you step up on a box that would be higher than your other foot could touch down because you're doing a one-legged step up, but you're actually doing the negative of it. So meaning that you're going to step up onto, let's say like a a 36-inch box. And what you'll do is sit back into the glute of the foot that's on that box. And very slowly, you're going to try to reach down with the leg that's straight, the one that's not working, till your big toe essentially touches the ground. And if you go deeper, well, then just raise the box. And then push all the way to the top with the leg that's on the box. Don't use the other leg. And squeeze that glute at the top. That is an amazing exercise for the glutes, hamstrings. It's a hybrid. It will work all the muscles in your body. But those specifically, I think, are absolutely fantastic. You know, things like they're called hydrants and donkey kicks. Those are all great. They all work. They're more body weight based. So you could use those as part of your warm up. So Michelle, hopefully that answers your question. I've gone over my time once again. Thank you everyone for tuning in. We'll be doing this again tomorrow. So please do feel free to tune in to the show tomorrow for part two of our Cabral house calls. And of course, do feel free to share the show whenever you feel it could serve someone else. Take care, everyone. Have an amazing rest of the weekend. Are you ready to heal yourself and then go on to heal others? If so, the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute can help you discover proven functional medicine protocols that blend the best of seven different healing disciplines from around the world. I personally share with you the exact handouts and protocols I use in my private practice that enable people to get well, lose the weight, and live longer, stronger. I want to pass this information on to the next generation of health coaches, and that is exactly why I created IHP. We are the future of the health coaching industry, and the skills and knowledge you will learn will make you an in-demand certified health coach anywhere in the world. Although we have many medical professionals taking the IHP certifications, no experience is necessary, and half our members have no previous health certifications. At the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute, our motto is a health coach in every home. Our goal is that you take this knowledge and then share it with family, friends, loved ones, your community, or in a practice where you create a career you love and can be proud of. The global IHP community is filled with some of the most kind and caring people in the world, and we can't wait to welcome you into our world soon. For more information or to set up a discovery call with one of our IHP Health Coach graduates, simply head over to integrativehealthpractitioner.org.